Small sip, small sip. <laughs> it's gonna be a really, really, really sad day when they get rid of stripper sex. It's gone already. <sighs> it's just the trip down memory lane. <laughs> oh, f you! <laughs> If you guys haven't heard, we're building out a custom right-hand drive Unos Roadster Miata from Japan. Check this out. This is our project car and we're documenting the build on this vehicle on our YouTube channel. We're case swapping it, we're manual swapping it, we're wide bodying it, we're gonna repaint it, new wheels, suspension, we're going all out on this thing. And then we're giving it away. And you can be entered by buying merch from carsuppliesWarehouse.com. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below where you can purchase merch and get entered to win. And make sure you check out the YouTube series of us building out this car. And remember, you can't win if you don't enter. Coronavirus. What's up everybody, welcome back to the Traveling Detailer series where we take you on a tour of the country, touring different shops and having fun. Welcome to the New York edition. So before we start work, first we get coffee. So this is Fuego, so I don't, I don't know the rules, but we'll find out. We gotta do the pass, dude. I said, I told him like, we didn't know the rules. Yeah, I know, that's why. <laughs> So Tony, Tony's the, the owner, founder, man, myth, legend, so on and so forth. And this is, this is Fuego. So here's the deal. So Jason adores coffee. He's yeah. extremely sensitive to caffeine to yeah. the point of where it will ruin the day. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to ease him into the decaf world a little bit. Yeah. But I think he needs to try a decaf Uncle Marvel. Yeah, we can do that. Perfect. We're gonna do a um, like a hardcore legit ghost tour, nice. which would be kind of cool just for the. I'm scared of the dark. Yeah, he doesn't like the dark. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck> you! <laughs> and it's fucking dark. <laughs> All right, so, where you guys wanna go for lunch? Wherever you like, you bring us to the spot. So yeah, this is the Rose Street. I mean, this is where most of the magic happens. Thank you to Tony for pushing me back into my love for coffee. We've been tasting coffees here at the shop for a little bit now, and I think I've matured myself out of my coffee sensitivity. So look out for our own special Chicago Auto Pros blend of coffee coming soon. So cold brew is uh, about three times the amount of caffeine than a regular. That's why coffee. I said a little bit. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so Jason, they serve the Zweigel's hot dogs, so you need to get a white hot. Oh yeah. So this is what I like to do. <laughs> All right. Take this, just straighten it out a little bit. You can put ketchup, mustard on it. I prefer mustard, that's just me. A little squirt of the French's. And then you have your meat hot. So this is the oil meat sauce I told you about. And this is what you do with it. And that is what put Rochester on the foodie map. Now how do you eat it? <laughs> Take it out, eat it. It's messy. Uh, we're gonna go visit a couple uh, detail shops and uh, see some guys, see some uh, Rochester detailing. Yo, look at these surfing ass geese. They're like, yo, we don't got a paddle, we'll just float. All right, let's row. Let's go see Buffett.
Got to take a uh, picture in front of the sign. So we're a little backwards on the tour. We we're going to go to the detail distributor that we met Warren at, but you were there for three years. I was there for three years, yeah. Right, marketing background always was like, hey man, I'm a detailer too, and I'm like, all right, marketing guy, like <laughs> I got to go to work. See you later. And then he calls one day and he's like, hey, like. I think I'm gonna open a shop and go full time. And I'm like, well, Warren, like you're not 21 years old. And he's like, I think I'm gonna do it. And I advised against it. Yeah. Like, it's not that I wasn't supportive. But the guys at our Atari were like, dude, you're wasting your time and your talents here. So he leaves the distributor, he finds next door. It wasn't run down, but it wasn't what it, it is It was now. a woodworker. And okay, like and he was in there for eight years. Okay. So you can imagine the sawdust and the amount and the of crap. Park. The craters in the parking yeah. lot. So like when they were saying, you, you, you know, they kept saying, you, you're wasting your time and your talents here, man. Like you need to, you need to find a shop, like a legit shop and just jump, yeah. and just jump into it. Sometimes you gotta just jump ship. So this, this place next door came up open and available. And I was like, man, if there isn't an omen from a higher power, like this is it. So it took me about a month to get the place, you know, pulled together yeah. and uh, got it cleaned up, got it painted, built that room. How long ago was this now? That was three years ago. So I'm going into right. my fourth year. And killing right it? Dude, yeah. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. Like, I cannot believe, like, when COVID, kind of when they were shutting everything down, yep. I was like, man, this is going to suck bad. Like everybody and, thought. And my business just shot through the roof. And you know, it's it's given me the ability to go, you know, take from that that shop. And there was a lawnmower shop in here, and you could not move. Dude, when I was it here, was floor to ceiling, wall to wall, lawnmowers, lawnmower parts, racks, uh, crates with lawnmowers. I mean, it, you, you couldn't walk in here. You couldn't walk in here like you couldn't walk in there. Yeah. And I, you know, I said I I want to get, I want to get in here, and I want to I. I want to build out my business because I'm doing yeah. so well over here. And the problem was, was I was doing all the high end, the film, the corrections and the coatings. At the same time, I was doing an interior and I was blowing all that garbage all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I have the curtain up on the, on the, but on that one bay. Yeah. But the problem was, was I couldn't keep it clean. So when this came up, I jumped on it. So Warren at one time knew a guy who was with Car Products who had a shop. So he has some of the classic. Yeah, some of the old school some stuff. Of, like, dude, this here, I'm telling you right now, like, it's going to be a sad day when that ocean blue is gone. This is probably one of my favorite solvent-based old school tire shines. And like, you can't, you can't buy it. It's, it's done. So if he, if he kills it now. It's going to be a really, really, really sad day when they get rid of strippers. It's gone already. It's no longer. It's no longer really? stripper. Sign. So I have the last. I have the last yeah. gallon. I'll be putting it up yeah. on uh, for auction. But, yeah. This was the rinseless wash. Powdery fresh. <laughs> it's been a long time since I smelled it. <laughs> Our um. You guys actually use this still? Yeah. Yeah. Take yeah, take yeah, a yeah. sniff. There you go. There you go. Mm. And then DM. <laughs> Brings back so many memories. Do more. This is the house brand from our Atari that you'll see tomorrow. They actually mix and blend in the back. Mm. So this is a uh, caustic melt to your face tire cleaner. All right. All right, dude. I will right, we'll stay longer next time. Yeah. It's all good. Nice meeting you. What? Yeah. Can I keep the microphone or do you want this back? <laughs> We're gonna need that back. I wanna, <laughs> I got some people I need to keep track of. So you see this, MTO, CO, SP4, Commander. Yeah. It's all, it's it's like all from back in the day. They didn't like stencil that on there. I'm mic'd up in case you hear anything, any ghosts. I mean, it's not, I, I don't think they come out at like when it's not, you know, like dark. Like going to the Why top. did ghosts care when it's night or not? I just, you know, like, you're not gonna get the full effect of upstairs with, with it not being dark. Uh, an armory, an old armory, it's supposed to be haunted, and uh, we're gonna take a tour. There's supposed to be a couple different things in here, like it's a, a music venue, there's a basement, it looks like a castle from the front. Oh no, it's a castle. Doesn't look like a castle, it's a castle. It is a castle? What was this back in the day? So it was built in the 
early to late 1890s. Okay. So, so Scotty will give you like the whole history, but it was an actual army armory. So okay. if you look back behind the random pile of trees, there is a major railway that goes all the way like across Western New York. So they would be coming across Western New York off of the rail and they would unload all of the tanks and everything in the back. Uh -huh. They would have the circus inside, which is the main hall is massive. They would get the elephants off the train and walk them into the back. You'll see once we go around back. So this was, I don't know exactly when it went vacant. I think like the 1960s, 1970s, and it was vacant for about 40 years. So it went up to public auction because it it's on Main Street, yeah. but it was completely dilapidated. The roof was collapsed in. There was more pigeon you know what than there was wood when you like walked it. But the owner is visually impaired and he bought it visually impaired. So he just had the, he had the picture in his head of what it, what it could be. Yeah. And he thought that the city and the area needed it. Um, there wasn't really a large enough venue in the city that wasn't so corporate. So downtown where we were by Fuego, there is an actual like, you know, like Coliseum, if you will. It's union ran and it's, it's set up for like big bands, but bands like yours and bands like Scott himself, like you can't go play like this big Coliseum. Yeah. So they opened this up to be able to cater to that. What's up, man? I'm Jason. Scott. Nice to meet you, dude. Jose. So yeah, I'm just giving them a little history. We don't have to do anything crazy. They just- uh, I just want to know what you guys want to see. You want to see like everything? Or you want to see like the creepy stuff? Like, he, I want to sure. see the creepy stuff, yeah. A little bit of everything. So long story short, we, we go around all the cities, detail related, but we look at other businesses that kind of parallel, yeah. but we also need like the cool shit that makes the culture of the area. And this is that. You said all this stuff or do you want me to say? Just the, the 1800s into the 1900s. But I mean, start from scratch because I probably butcher it. Built in, built in 1905, basically by the U.S. government. Um, U.S. Army National Guard was in here up until 1990. They moved over by the airport because they didn't have enough parking. And a dude named Jeff Brongo bought this place for like 250 grand. He sat on it for like 10 years, had an entertainment license, had like beer coolers rolled into the arena, which we'll show you. And then they did a couple of shows. He got shut down, lost his entertainment license, bunch of problems. He didn't really know what he was doing. But yeah. Get this place. Um, let's walk in and I'll start describing yeah. some of this stuff. So we're gonna start in the haunt stuff. It is zombie themed. And I don't know, we might switch it up because it hits a little close now. Cause basically the whole thing was, this is a safe zone. You're coming here. There's been zombie attacks all over the United States. Maybe the world, you know, if you want to go that far, there's like fake newscasts playing like, oh, zombie attack here. So come to the Main Street Armory, get your vaccine from the CDC. You're getting it through the respiratory system. There might be some slight side effects. And then you come in and it's all This is called the heartbeat hallway. So there's strobes that are um, basically timed with a heartbeat sound. So you, all you see, you can barely see that guy yeah, down there. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? And you're just like in this big cavernous hallway. It's darked out as fuck because you, you know, Sometimes the light's shining. Sometimes closer, you feel better when like, you're on a wide what, open space. Like if you turn that light off, you're not gonna see shit. So you're getting the flash of that. And then basically as you start walking up, there's actors hiding in the alcoves. And so then when the light pops on, they're fucking an inch from your face. <laughs> you know, and they're all covered in all their stuff. And then this is the morgue area. Uh, and this is all carved foam. Oh, you're not even in here. <laughs> Sorry, we got lost in the room of dolls. Oh, uh, we're, we're gonna get there. Okay. I'm gonna show you. Ah, fuck you! <laughs> oh, that was really easy. This is just like a big giant metal shelf and there's just a wall knocker on there, so. 
loud, loud noises. Me. <laughs> <Scared> me. <laughs> I thought that was fake. <laughs> I'll show you the most expensive prop in here now. Bought this from the company, I believe it's called Gore Galore. Just walk right here, right about, you know, stand, stand right about here with your camera. No, no, stand right here. No, no, it's like, it, I'm not gonna like hit you with it. Yeah, so that guy was really expensive. It's a giant locust. When the air is on, the air is obviously not on because it's off. The, the jaws move, and then these are basically giant puppet foam arms that a person controls. So then if you come over here, this is where the claustrophobic is. I don't know if you want me to turn it on. Oh, absolutely. Okay, give me two seconds. Yeah, so I, I put this up. I sealed it all with great foam because I wanted to be as tight as humanly f***ing possible. Because yeah. I really wanted to squeeze the shit out of you. But I bought the longest one they had. This is 32 foot. So like you get start getting into it and you're like, when the f*** is this over? Like that's the feeling. I want yep. that terrible feeling to go through you. Go, Jason. Oh, and there wouldn't be any light on the other side, so you should probably turn your phone off. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Where was the morgue? Was it in there or over to the left? Uh, it was supposedly in there, straight ahead. So you make the left, that's where that chute I was telling you about is. Mm. Yeah, the, I mean, the doors are still there. They're, they've been taken out and like there's new doors over there because it's an emergency exit now. Mm -hmm. There's supposedly a morgue in there. I don't, I don't know how much I fucking believe that. <laughs> I'm sold. I told you my story. Yeah, I'm go sold. Ghost hunters also came through here and said it was totally fucking haunted, you know? <laughs> how was that? That was awesome. Is this the East Coast Training Center? How's it going? My name's Josh and this is Rochester Auto Detail. So yeah, Jason, none of this was here when young Josh got this the space. Yeah. Everything out there was the door wasn't here. The grade was like messed up the first time I came in to meet him. Yeah. They finally they when they finally got the hole cut out for the door, the shop itself was a foot and a half lower. Than the parking lot. So not they didn't have to just cut this out for the green the drains. They had to cut out like the whole area in the parking lot. Like you'll see all the concrete. And then they had to figure out how to do with the drop ceilings. They had to take the main line for the, the water and move it up like three feet. Wow. Well yeah, all this was done and graded. That's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. And like he negotiated it out and like didn't hurt him, I don't think. Nice. I didn't have to pay for a single thing. <laughs> But I did, I did have to sign a five-year lease instead of year by year, but I don't think I'm gonna have to move in five years, right. at least yet. But uh, yeah, he, he put in the water line over there. Well, that's the thing that sucked. I went six months without having water. I had to run a 200-foot hose out the door through the parking lot over into their side for six months during the winter. So every single night I had to wrap it up because it would freeze. Finally, he came and put the water line and it took him 30 minutes. <laughs> So one of the funny things is I would like to give a tour real fast. Um, this is Josh's staircase to nowhere. <laughs> um, that is not an exit. Is it an exit? No, no, it's not, not an, an exit. exit. Not an exit, not an exit. So like what when, when he was asking me when I first came here, like what he should do, I said he should put a wall there and put the stairs down along that wall and get another spot for a car here. But then I realized he's just gonna get more Fieros. So I said, you know what, just leave the stairs and we'll just talk about them every time I see him. So he'll, he'll actually post on Instagram. I think he's getting a little keen to my game because you don't see the stairs that much anymore. <laughs> it used to be like nice stairs. Like, where do the stairs go? Why don't you park it on the where stairs? Where do the stairs go? Someone's- There's an apartment up there and the guy that owns a motorcycle shop in the back lives up there and he's looking for a house or something. But if he ever moves out, I get first dibs on it, which I'd really like to do. Because Then the I, stairs <laughs> would make sense. Then, yeah. then they'll be useful. But no, I live with my grandparents right now. So okay. once I got this place, I figured, you know, might as well. I was looking, I was probably going to start you looking for just, an apartment you do, this you year. You start working like all night with the music just blasting. Yeah. The no, I, I'm a night owl anyways. Like 
if I don't, if I have a car, it's here for like a couple days, and I, I don't have to meet a customer in the morning. I won't come in till noon, but I'll work until 2 a.m. <laughs> I like Josh. I like Supras. Good seeing yeah, you. You too. If you uh, hear of anything bad happening at Watkins Glen tomorrow, that's us. <laughs> Morning. What's up? How you doing? Good. How'd you sleep last night? I slept good. You're nude, refreshed, whole new person, ready to take on the day. <laughs> On this part of our magnificent journey, we will go down the history of Eric's professional detailing career. So when I moved to Rochester in 2006, I was detailing on Long Island out of a body shop, and that's kind of where I got my professional title. So I move up here and like, I don't know, I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep on doing it or not, but I bought um, a house on an acre that had a th uh, thousand square foot shop which was super cool at 23 years old, but it was 45 minutes from the actual city where I worked and it was kind of a long commute and I didn't really know anybody. So I really got into the fabrication side of things at the house shop. And then as I got to know people more and more and they got to know me, they were like, yo, like we've seen some of your stuff from getting to know me, like, can you do my car? So I'm like, you know, I got this, yeah, it wasn't a dirty shop because I'm OCD as hell, but like it was still a fabrication shop. You know, I'm like, wow, well, I'm, like, I'm not really set up for it. And this, that, and the third. So I did a couple of cars at the house. I didn't really like it. I started, you know, working on this side of the city and randomly stumbled upon our Atari auto finishers. Now, I always thought they were just a paint store because whenever I, I heard auto finishers downstate, it was, it was a paint shop, you know? And of course, yeah. I had some compounds and some polishes and pads, but like, it was for body shop guys. So I just randomly stop in one day, but I'm like, holy cow, this is like a detailing superstore. <laughs> and it was with like brands I've never heard of. And it was five gallon squares and 30 gallon totes. And like yeah. the price was really good. And I'm like, why am I paying all this money for like, you know, black magic when like I can get a gallon of this stuff for the same price. So it really opened my eyes to what would be the future now, you know, really working with and developing wholesale markets and working with distributors. But we are, uh, our Toyota Auto Finishers buy where the pros buy. What up? What up? So I gave him, um, I gave him my history with our Atari, but we have to put a microphone on you. Oh yeah, and we're just gonna walk it real fast. You wanna walk it? Well, this is like a big piece of my history, cuz. Let's go. You know? So yeah, so so Paulie was one of the first G-Technic brick and mortar distributors, right? Okay. Because usually, like, we walked into a place like this six years ago and we're like, hey, hey, you gotta try this stuff, it's really good. They look at the price and they're like, get the fuck out of here. Because, you know, it's just, it's different, right? But yeah, then like, right. you know, Rupes picked up and all the other stuff in industry picked up and then like, this just kind of made sense. Yeah. But he is, um, he he is on it. So we used to be strictly Urtari Auto Finishers. Next door was Reister Auto Color. When we were bought out by Reister Lead, um, took about a year and a half and then we combined the two businesses, made it one. Doing that, we remodeled the, the store because believe me, it looked like vintage before. <laughs> it was beige and tan and, and right, and we ripped everything out and put new flooring in and you know, the whole nine yards and Eric came in and he built this corner for us and. So we're actually, I, we just bought a building. So we have Car Supplies Warehouse, which is an online e-commerce store. And we bought a building for our new warehouse and we have enough room to do kind of a retail spot in Chicago. Nice. So this is cool to nice. see this because yeah. I've never done a retail spot and I don't even know where to start with. You know, originally when we opened the store up in 85, uh, because we used to be in a, in a, a dairy, down the street, it wasn't really meant for retail. It was meant for our wholesale customers to come in and just kind of get stuff when they couldn't get on the trucks because we used to have four big wagon peddler trucks on the road yeah. back in the day. Um, and then eventually just evolved into this thing, yeah. you know? So now, and then especially being combined with next door, yeah, we get a set amount of uh, walk-in, especially this year. Now that COVID has lifted a little bit, I yeah. mean, our retail has been... Yeah. He's back there working the magic right now. Yep. 
So that's, that's Steve, he's the master mixer, and that's his lab. All right, we got to roll. You got to roll. Like it's great meeting you, brother. Yeah, I'll, yeah, see, I'll, see, I'll spend too. more time next time. We're like. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to rip over the river back to the west side. That's where I started my patrol career. And uh, it was funny. I would always drive through this complex. And even though it was in a run down part of the city, I was always like, man, like how cool would it be to have a detail shop over here? And it can't be that expensive. But. You know, for all the detailers out there, you know, you, you can get a decent spot for, you know, a decent price, as long as it's secure and you're smart, make it happen. This is where it all started for you, huh? This is where it all started. Should we knock on the door? No, not a chance in hell. <laughs> Always felt good it had graded windows though, to be honest with you. But yeah, I mean, imagine the photos we were taking out here. And like, we were, it was funny because we were like trying to be like super high end, but like, this was it. This was the spot. Welcome to Eric's first detail show. Number one. All right, get your camera before we get killed. We don't have guns anymore. <laughs> <sighs> it's just a trip down memory lane. <laughs> but yeah, dude, humble beginnings. Yeah, I love it, man. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. The good news is Tony will feed us. Ready to go. Watkins Glen Ferrari challenge, baby. Yes. How are you, sir? Brother, good to see you. Here. I'm Jason. Nice to meet you. So, Jonathan and Jose, the man hey, behind Jose. the camera. Nice to see you, man. Nice to meet you. What does your day look like? Because we don't want to get in your way. Yeah, no. I'm, I mean, these guys are going to finish this last practice session, and then we're, we're free. Are you yeah, good? Yeah. Are you good for like 20 minutes right yeah, now? Yeah. So I came here once in the winter. Thought it'd be cool to see it like, but a lot of it frozen over. The stairs, when they're frozen of water, not cool. Not cool at all. All right, cars just went out there. They're getting ready for qualifying. Um, this will determine where they are when they start, when the race goes off, which is later this afternoon. That was awesome. All right, Eric, where's the next adventure? We are off east to the very well-known but highly guarded Monticello Motorsports Club. It's a private club. They do a couple of events a year that allows the public onto the property. Um, and they also have an off-road course, electric mountain biking course, uh, and a uh, tank course that's open to the public. But where we're going, it is it will be members only. So we'll have some exclusive content from the Monticello Motorsports Park. What's up everybody? It's a weekend wash time where we're here with Danny and we're at Monticello Motor Club. On a weekend. On a weekend, it's the actual weekend, that never happened. Welcome Danny. <laughs> so we're gonna be washing this beautiful McLaren 620R behind us. This is a member's car. Correct. And we're gonna go through the detailing process that you guys do here. And you, we were talking earlier, you like, you're doing like 50 cars a day out of here. Yep. How many guys? A team of six, three, three men, three women. That's awesome, man. So we're gonna do weekend wash style with Danny here. We're gonna learn about the Monticello Motor Club and then go through the wash process that you guys do on some of these race cars. Absolutely. <sighs> So 
So this is a member's car. Like, let's talk about like the club here. This is a members only club, Correct. right? Yeah, you run a killer operation, man. I appreciate you showing us around and Thank you. showing us the wash process, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Nice and then uh, after this is uh, New York City. All right, this morning we did some little tourist stuff. Went by and seen the Statue of Liberty, rode some bikes around. Uh, we actually uh, went by Casey Neistat to see if anything was going on there, but uh, there's nothing but pretty closed down. What's up, Casey? Uh, now we're here, we're gonna have some brunch at the Manhattan Motor Club and uh, see what it's all about. Come on in. We're in the middle of New York City in this cool car clubs right here in the heart of the city. It's awesome. I love it. So when did Manhattan start for you? We started, so I came here January 2003 to start figuring it out. We launched July 2005, so it was pretty well two and a half years. I found my two business partners. We were gonna, they were looking to do a franchise originally and then we, it wasn't gonna work. I had to be involved. Um, it just, from uh, so many aspects, we funded the original business over here. It just came together much quick, quicker by us being yeah. in the equity side of it. Sure. Um, and this is the second location? No, it's the first in, second in the world, first in New York. Uh, first in America, sorry. But this property Oh yeah, we moved, yeah. we started at 250 Hudson Street, uh, Hudson and Broome, uh, down in Soho. Mm -hmm. And then we moved here in 2016. Uh, we came to the end that we did 11 years there, cool. and then we uh, found this place which enabled us to do the bar restaurant. And we always, we always knew our community was strong. I mean, what, what the business appears to be, and what the business is, are two separate things. The business appears to be this kind of high-end car-driving club. What the business is, is a member's experience club. Mm -hmm. So the members may join to drive the cars, they may join to hang out here, but we want to get them out at the raceway, doing rallies. Would you mind giving us a short tour around the, yeah, yeah, the area? Let's do it. We do a rally most Sundays, get our members out in their cars, our cars. But it's just, again, it's just getting, meeting, yeah. connecting, getting people out. You know, getting people, it's a community. That's what we are, we're a community. Are you doing service here too? We only for our cars. I mean, we're very, okay. we're very, very, um, so this, everything here is just for the maintenance for of us, the cars yeah. that you carry? Yes. Okay. We don't do anything outside. Yeah. We'll change a wheel if a member's stuck or if they have a, we'll do a bit of diagnosis if they have a problem, you know, we, but our main, our main uh, resource is just for the guys. Yeah. So then we come into uh, the bar, the, air, the so restaurant this is, area. Yeah, so this is our showroom. Then that opens out onto the deck. We face due west, yep. which means we get the sunsets. We had a nice brunch out there earlier, yep. beautiful space. So that's kind of, and again, it's just set up for people to mix. So uh, cars, motorcycles, wave runners, any boats or anything any bigger like that or? No, we, we no haven't. Yet? No, well, we've got some members who have helicopters and there's okay. the blade, the blade heliport is just probably yeah, 600, 600, yeah, 600 yards south. So we do have members calling their helicopters in and then they'll disappear for an hour. This is awesome. I mean, to be able to, how, how often do you get to, I mean, are you taking some of the vehicles out too? And I don't really know. I mean, I, it's really that side of the business. If I want, I like Porsches. I got three or four nice Porsches. I drive that, I've got my M4. Most of the time I'm on the, I'm on the bikes around Manhattan. I'll drive a car if it's new, um, but it's for, the, it's for the members. Where's your home base? I actually live, I'm full-time in uh, Manhattan now. Okay. I, I, I haven't been back to the UK for quite since the start of last year. Uh, I've got two grown-up kids in the UK, and then my youngest son works, uh, works over here. So I'm probably kind of, this is my, this is my home, this is my future. No real plans to go back. So you have a Manhattan location. We're opening up in LA. LA, when's yeah. that coming? Probably Q2 next year I'm aiming it for. 
So, uh, and then we're looking at some other projects. We've had people approach us for doing something in um, Miami. We're very interested in locations like Austin, Texas. That kind of excites us. Booming city so right now. Yeah, so we're looking at and we're, we're looking at some other iterations, hotel rooms within the business. And okay. So ch kind of changing. All inclusive type of stuff, you yes. know, just everything that, yeah. You, we have everything on site. Yeah, I, I can see the big need for that with the members, you know, they want to come in, they want to, don't want to think about anything else. Yeah. Want to enjoy their time and vacation, yeah. So, so yeah, so that's kind of classic car club Manhattan for you. Yeah. Whist whistle stop tour. <laughs> It's beautiful, man. Thank you. I appreciate the little tour. Great meeting you. Beautiful place, man. This is inspiring for, for guys like me who have, you know, I started off at just washing cars, you know, in a little tiny parking garage and, you know, growing the business and, be, you know, seeing other businesses like this. And, you know, th those dreams are real. Well, you can do it. I mean, it's, look, this, don't get me wrong, this business is built on one thing and one thing alone. That's hard work. That's it. Yeah. I'm no genius. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm no genius. I just work. I work. So I'm here. I'm seven days a week, day in, day out, putting the hours in. We just keep going at it. And like last year was a terrible year for everyone, but we're still here because we work hard. Yeah. Simple as that. Simple as that. Hard work, yeah. passion, and a That's dream. That's it. Just keep going. That's Never give need. up. That's all Never you ever need. give up. Never give up. That's, that's awesome, it. man. All right. Great to see you. No, that's nice awesome, to meet. man. That's all so right. cool. Cheers. Thank you so much.